1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we'll go, we'll read the first three verses. <clears throat> if you have it, say amen. amen. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. This very first verse sets the tone for this next 33 verses. Of course, we're not going to have you stand for all 33, but I just want to stop right here and pause to let you know that this scripture is talking, this first half of this chapter is talking about the gift of prophecy. Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and to exhortation and comfort. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And I'm going to stop reading there. We'll pray and I'll let you be seated. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this service. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that we've already felt. Thank you, Lord, for visiting with us here today, strengthening us. God, we just ask you to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. Help me today, God, to teach this lesson, God, about the wonderful gift that you've given to men. And Lord, we love you, God, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> I was asked, or rather told, that <laughs> let me see if I can get this out right. That speaking in tongues was silly. Not necessary, basically. And after a little while of conversing back and forth, realized that it wasn't necessarily they had anything to do with the act of speaking in tongues, but that if you do speak in tongues, you must already know what you're saying so that you can interpret what you just spoke. And I'm here to tell you that that is not what this chapter is speaking to. The act of receiving the Holy Ghost is not the act of prophesy. You're both, it's both speaking in tongues, but it's a two different things. And so I'm going to try my best to make you understand that there is a difference in how you can be solid in believing what you believe. Now, um, I want to, if you will, hold your place here in Corinthians. But I do want to jump over to the book of Acts where it all started. Anybody know where it all started? <laughs> Acts chapter what? Acts chapter 2. I want to show you something that perhaps you have overlooked and over you just read it too fast chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I want you to notice the word other. We read in our opening scripture about an unknown tongue. 
Now, I want to let you know that the word unknown in 1 Corinthians is italicized. If you didn't notice that, maybe you can go back and notice it. But that indicates that the, in, the translators put that word in there. Okay? It causes no problem whatsoever with the message of the first 33 verses of that chapter. Now, um, they put that word in there for one reason. Maybe there's several reasons, but one of them was to make the language flow better, help you understand so that it's not choppy, so to speak. But so we have in 1 Corinthians 14 an unknown tongue, and in, second, and in the second chapter of Acts, we have other tongues. So, uh, we'll continue reading verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. First and foremost, if you cause yourself to speak in tongues, it is not of God. If I say, hola, como estas? I just said, hello, how are you? That was not of God. Does that make sense? I already knew that. Amen. So what did not come from God? The act of receiving the Holy Ghost is a phenomenon. It is a miracle. It is the Spirit of God coming into one's life. It is absolute life changing. And so therefore, again, if, 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 you, if you do it on your own, it is not God, it is you. There have been some that I have heard, they've say. See my tie, tie my tie. It ain't of God. You say that as fast as you want to. Make it sound genuine. But it's not of God. And the reason you're going to know is because when the Holy Ghost comes in, it changes your whole outlook. It puts a smile where there was no smile. Man, it makes you think about life differently. It puts happiness and joy in your life. Amen. And so you're going to know because of the fruits that come with the sweet Holy Ghost. All right, I got to go on. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Isn't that awesome? Every single nation under the heavens had a representative in Jerusalem when the Holy Ghost was poured out. That means every tongue on the planet was present. Every diverse tongue. Is that not, not what it just said? This is amazing, folks. It, I, and I, I'm going to try not to jump around, but I can't help it. This is good. This is real good. Listen. You know... When man was in unity and they had it all together and they all spoke with one mind and one accord, you know when that was before the book of Acts? Does anybody know at what point in history that they all spoke with one mind and one accord? Right before the Tower of Babel. And God said, well, I'll just mess up their tongues. And they went, and they went everywhere, and there's all kind of tongues. Amen. I just think that it's unique. I think it's neat to, today that in the book of Acts chapter 2, amen, the same God that scattered all the people and gave them all the different tongues that they have, on this day he brought at least one representative of every tongue under heaven and put them in the same in the same city where the Holy Ghost is fixing to be poured out. Now, I don't know if you guys recognize that, but I wanted to point it out today. Now, 
There is one other thing that I want to point out to you that you may have overlooked. And the argument that was presented to me was it didn't matter what tongue you were speaking. If it was the Holy Ghost or prophecy, that the person speaking the tongue would automatically know what's being said. And that is not the case. Okay, I want to prove that to you here today. Now, verse 6 says, Now this was noised abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded. They were confused because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one, and one to another, Behold, are not all these Galileans, or which speak Galileans? How hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? And he begins to list them. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and, and Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. I'm, I'm telling you today that the problem with the notion that if you speak in tongues, you're going to know what to, that you're saying. The problem with that is it does not agree with the scripture. What you just read with me was that the other people heard them, the ones filled with the Holy Ghost, speak with tongues. And, and they, they interpreted that the people speaking in tongues were, were magnifying God and speaking the wonderful works of God. Yes, not the speaker. The speaker was not interpreting it. Right. The hearer was hearing it in their own language. Right. And they even argued, are not these Galileans? How are they speaking Arabian? Yeah. How are they speaking the Parthian language? They're Galileans. Right. And, and a Parthian that represented that nation heard one speaking in his language and another one heard him speaking in their language. And, and so it was a phenomenon. It was awesome. It was God. You can't make this up. It's got to be God. Praise God. So I believe when I got the Holy Ghost, I did not speak English. That would have been me. I don't know what language I spoke. But I know it wasn't anyone that I knew. Because that is the sign. That is the wonder that God would take control of the most deadly body part you have. It's the most unruly, the Bible says, full of deadly poison. You know we can say some things that really hurt folks. And we have said it, and we've repented, and we've, we've, we've said things, we've lashed out. Man, I'm telling you, the tongue is unruly. Anybody ever had to repent over your tongue? Getting out of, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I was out of line for saying that. And so isn't it amazing that when God proves that he's taken control of your life, that you have given him your life, you have to give him your tongue as proof. Amen. Praise God. Well, I just wanted to point that out real quickly. Amen. The people hearing them speak in tongues knew what they were saying. The speakers did not interpret for them what, hey, listen, what I just said. Here's what I just said. Doesn't make sense, does it? All right. So now I want to go back to 1 Corinthians 14. I will try my best to not wear you out with this today. And I'm going to start again. Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue 
Again, notice the italicized word. It was added in there because they didn't have a word for it. But they did have, you can look in the interlinear Bible, the, the tenses of the word are there. So this, this ain't, it ain't like they just made up a word. Okay? If you want to take the word unknown out of it, it would read like this. For he that speaketh in a tongue, and, and tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Still makes sense, don't it? For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He that prophesieth, though, speaketh unto men, to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. It's making a distinction between the two. And so when you're in the spirit, and you're praying, and you're speaking in tongues, and it's not made up, it's not you, it's actually God. Amen. You're, you're either glorifying God, you're, you're praising God in some way, or you're speaking the mysteries of God in some way. And the Bible said that the Spirit itself uh, uh, uttereth groanings, or there's groanings that cannot be uttered, but it's ministering to our spirit. Amen. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesy than he that speak with tongues, except, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. What he's saying here is, don't, it's not that you can't speak in tongues without some kind of interpretation. Because not every tongue has an interpretation. We've made this distinction. Speaking in tongues and prophesying. Amen. But if you're going to, if, if, if it is a prophecy, you need to wait on the Lord and obey God. Amen. And interpret because God is trying to edify the church. And he said, except that you interpret that the church may receive edifying. Amen. Sister Jimmy, uh, of course she's not here today, but you know she's been used in the gift. In that gift. And, and, and she normally will interpret the prophecy. And if she don't, nobody's stepping up. And we're all thinking, hmm. Well, wonder what, wonder what God said. See what I mean? And so, this is what Paul is trying to avoid. We don't want that confusion. We know God spoke, but we don't know what he said. Amen. So, are you, are you following along with me here today? Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophecy, or by doctrine. And even these things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? You, do you see the argument that he's trying to make? It, these things, it does have to make sense if, if you're prophesying. Amen. And so likewise, verse 9, ye, ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak it into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh as a barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. We have moved from the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues to the gift of prophecy. You can prophesy all you want to in a church service, but if there's no interpretation, it does nobody any good. This is what Paul was speaking of. 
He's not saying that every time you speak in tongues, you have to interpret it. There is a difference. Amen. Therefore, I know if I know not the meaning of the voice, okay, we've read that one. Verse 12, even so ye for as much as ye <clears throat> as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. He's saying if you're going to pray for a gift, pray that you're able to interpret Pray that you're going to be able to prophesy and interpret because we want the church to be edified. Amen. Now listen, when I was growing up, <clears throat> I don't know if they did it right or not because <laughs> just about every time I heard prophecy, tongues, and interpretation, it was bad news Sally. And somebody was getting their last call. And there were several times that they got their last call three nights in a row. I'm not knocking it. I'm, please don't, don't get me wrong. But Paul just said that prophecy is to the edifying of the church. So we must be careful. I don't believe that somebody getting their last call in front of you is edifying you. Again, I'm not knocking it, and if God so chooses to tell somebody that, we're going to let him. But you've got to understand, the gift of prophecy is not always that doom and gloom feeling. And I want us to realize that, that a lot of us coming up, that's what we experienced. Doesn't mean that that's the way it should have been. Amen. I don't believe God's going to use fear tactics on you to get you to live right. You got to love God. You, somebody twist your arm, make you do something. Amen. If that's what they say to get you to heaven, they're going to get you right to the gate. And because it wasn't in your heart, you're going to, they're going to lose their grip on you and you're going to be lost. Amen. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. I'm telling you right now, if you feel the gift of prophecy on you, you feel something's fixing to happen, you feel that unction in the, in the, in the spirit, you also need to be praying, God, don't let me do this without an interpretation of it, God. Help me, Lord, to edify the church. I feel you on my... On me strong, God. I know you're about to use me, but God, please. He's saying right here, pray that you may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. But my understanding is unfruitful. I mean, to me, you read this, it makes all the sense in the world. When, I'm dealing, when, when I was dealing with this individual, it, to me it felt like that it was, it was there using this chapter as a means to say, if you're going to speak in tongues, you have to have already known what you were saying so that you can interpret it. To me, that is a cop-out for them to never speak in tongues. They have a problem with it, and they've had a problem with it from the beginning. Amen. Amen. When you try to confuse the two, you got the gift of the Holy Ghost and then you got the gift of prophecy. When you try to confuse the two so that you can void them both out, there's a more spiritual problem with you than you think. Amen. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of an unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understand not what thou sayest? Amen. It's like praying over the food, and everybody's listening to you pray, and then you go to speaking in tongues. This is what he's talking about. Amen. I'm not saying God can't have that it won't happen when you speak in tongues over breakfast or dinner. Amen. Especially if you've already been in the spirit and in the mind of God preceding that. Sometimes it just happens. But what he is saying that most everybody that's at the dinner table is not in a spiritual 
uh, way. They're ready to eat. And so it's going to create awkwardness is what he's saying. Amen. And so we, we got to pay attention to what the implications also of what's being said. And uh, so, for thou verily us givest thanks, for thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words in my, with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. He's saying, I would rather speak to you in a language you can understand than to just go around prophesying all the time. And there's nobody there to interpret. Amen. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children. But in understanding... Grow up, be men. In malice, you know what malice is. It's okay to be children there. But in understanding, let's grow up. Think about this. Let's be men. In the law, it is written with men of other. Now, see, other, other tongues. We got it again right here. We have moved on from the italicized word of unknown to other. Other is absolutely in the scripture, in the translation. Other. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them which that believe not, but for them which believe. He is keeping the two separated because there's two different subjects to deal with. Amen. If therefore the whole church be come together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, Will they not say that you are mad? Will this make sense? I mean, the whole place over here, you're, you're, you're going on with your language, and you're going on over there prophesying, and that and over there saying it, and ain't nobody going to tell what's happening. Everybody, you're going to think you're mad. Praise the Lord. But if we had, but if we had, Someone kneeling at this altar, praying for God to forgive them of their sins, and asking God for the Holy Ghost, and they and they spake Portuguese, not one lick of English. The only thing they knew was Portuguese, and all of a sudden you started hearing them speak in a in a southern Oklahoma accent, perfect English. Guess what you're gonna believe? You're gonna believe that's God. They are speaking in, in the English tongue. They are got the Holy Ghost because they don't know the English language. They are Portuguese. And, and, and here also they have a perfect accent. Ain't nobody can do that but God. Hallelujah. And so it is a sign. We saw it. We heard it. Amen. And, uh, and so, uh, I, I just, I, I feel this morning to get this out. I want you to understand there is a difference in the tongues. The tongue of prophesying and the act of receiving the Holy Ghost or speaking in tongues. Now, um, we'll go on just a little bit further. But if all prophesy, see, the confusion, you're all mad. And there come out, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. 
And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and, rep and report that God is in you of a truth. Now let me interpret what, let me, let me show you what's just been said. If, if there's prophesying going on in the church and one is in there and you're prophesying and you just read his mail and he's the only one that knows that to be true and, somebody, and, and, and he's going to know, then he's going he's gonna to glorify God and he's going to report to God that you're all, this is not fake. How can you know my deep, dark secret? I've never told it to anybody. But here you have just revealed it. Proof. Amen. Um, how is it then, brethren, verse 26, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. He's saying, if there's more than one prophecy in a service, let it come by course. Don't talk over one another. Don't, you know, one at a time and let one interpret. Because God's not the author of confusion. And so, and so here we go. Um, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. If there's no interpreter... I don't care how you feel about the spirit, the spirit of prophecy on you. The Bible says, save it for another day. Praise God. Let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. All he's doing here is giving direction in the house of God so that there's not chaos. In the operation of the gifts. Amen. Amen. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and call and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophet. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Amen. God is not the author of confusion. Amen. I, I hope that you understand that for you to go to heaven, I mean, we, we all know, there ain't nobody in here, nobody in the world that's called themselves Christian will argue the fact that every Christian needs to be baptized. I mean, that's not an odd, awkward thing, is it? But when it comes to the Holy Ghost, now we got the awkwardness starting, right? You know why? Because it's not natural. It's supernatural. Amen. And I'm telling you, there are folks in this world, a lot of them that are afraid of the supernatural things of God. I have heard people say, I'm not going to go to church because I have to change my ways. Well, there you go. I've heard them say, well, I'm going to go over to this church because I don't have to change my ways. And they go over there and they feel right as rain. But I'm not the one who gets to label what sin is. God is the one that gets to say what sin is. Amen. I, I'm not the one that, that, that said certain things were sin. God did. But because he did, I'm going to go with him. Amen. Thou shalt not lie. That was from God. Thou shalt not steal. That was from God. I, you know, look, somebody's laid their wallet down, and you see it, and boy, you can just see the $100 bill folded up in there. It's going to make you feel good to take it and go spend it. Didn't have to earn it, didn't have to do nothing, but it's still wrong. And you go to church somewhere that says, you know what? Hey, as long as you pay your tithe on that $100 bill, you know, hey, I don't care where you get your money. It's sin. Amen. God said it was sin. You stole. Right. I don't care if you pay tithe on it or not. <laughs> right. 
That ain't going to help it any. And so the problem with humanity is, is we have, we have decided instead of letting God be God, we'll, we'll decide what God is. God is now become who we say he is. That's why this church can do that, and that church can do this, and then all these different religions and different doctrines. I'm telling you, uh, it's because I'm going to say this. I'm going to close because it's getting late, and and we got some things to do. But in the 1500s, what was it, Martin Luther? Y'all remember him in your history books? He, was, he started what we call the Protestant church. What is the root word of Protestant? Protest. What is the act of protesting? You, you're, you're rebelling against an, an, another notion. Another, you're protesting. Now, I'm not saying that what he was protesting against, you know, was right, but the, just the act of it itself. And so, and from that, we have all these other churches. I have somewhere written down, I, I don't have with me today, but uh, I have a list of the major churches in the world, and believe it or not, Believe it or not, if you want to, you go study it out for yourself. But most of your, I would say 99.9% .9 of all current churches came out from or was upset with, at one point, the Catholic Church. You go look at it. The Presbyterian, the Baptist, the, I mean, you, every one of them came out because there was something about them they didn't like, and so they came off and they started their own work and done their own thing. The Catholic Church sprinkled, the Baptists decided we believe it takes more than just sprinkling, so they became the what? Baptists. I, this is not, I'm not making this up. You can go study it for yourself. Amen. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the baptism is easy. We just get in the water, right? I mean, nobody fusses over that. But when you start talking about the supernatural act of speaking in tongues, a lot of people say, you know what? That's just weird. Y'all are weird. But it's not weird because, I, and I've said this before, a man with an argument is no match for a man with an experience. You may have never stuck your finger in a in a in a plug-in socket or a light socket, and yeah, you may never have experienced getting shocked by that. But I'm an electrician. I know that it shocks. I don't like the feeling of it, but I can explain it to you to this very day because I've been shocked many a times. You're just going to have to believe me that it's going to give you a joke that you're not going to like. And every time I've ever been shocked, I've always had the same reaction. What just happened? Oh. The Holy Ghost is the same way. You're going to know it when you got it. Amen. And once you get it, you cannot deny right. that it is powerful. Amen. Amen. So uh, today, uh, thank you for, for just letting me go through some of this, and, and I'm telling you, there's many other scriptures that we can go with today, but I'm already 40-something minutes into this message, and I'm trying to do better, so we're going we're gonna to call it there, but you got to understand, don't let somebody tell you that because Paul said you got to interpret, amen, that, that you got to interpret every single syllable that you spoke in tongues. And no, you're not going to know. You're not going to know because it's a, it's a phenomenon. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And so I'll leave it with that today. If you have any questions 
about this. Maybe you've never even considered it. Because it's easy for churchgoers, especially if you've come to church as a child and you're raised up in it, you just go with the flow. Why do you believe what you believe? What well, mama said, daddy said, preacher, that's just what we've always heard. I mean, that's not a good thing either. Because uh, there was many, many uh, children in Germany that thought Hitler was exactly right. That's just the way they were, that was just what they were taught. I mean, so I don't want you to just do something because somebody told you to. I want you to know why you're doing it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's, it's the same way. We're teaching our children to say yes, sir, no, sir, and yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Don't do it just because I tell you. Understand why you're showing respect. Right. <clears throat> And when you show that respect, it comes back to you. And so, um, if you have any questions about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and the gift of prophecy, whatnot, feel free to come and ask me. We'll do our best to dive into it and give you the answers you need.